Hey folks, Nathan here, and today I'm gonna teach you some advanced color grading techniques when setting up the look of your scene. All done by hand manually, because that's the best way to do it. And that's what professionals do, right? Or is that what professionals do? We'll open up Resolve and follow along. But at the end of this video, you'll have a better understanding of simple color workflows and why big complicated no graphs may be good for an end result, but may not be the best way to start off your project. So here we are in Resolve 17 with a super simple edit straight at a camera from a Blackmagic Pocket 4K. And we're gonna start by doing things the complicated way. So we're gonna go into the color page. We're gonna start off by adding some contrast and saturation. Now there's a ton of different ways you can go about doing this. You can go in your curves or do something in your primary controls or maybe even go into your log controls. But for this example, I'm just going to use the contrast slider and then make some adjustments in my primary controls to kind of adjust the exposure as I see fit. And yeah, we'll park it right around there. And to get a white balance, I'm actually going to show picker RGB value. And now we can see, I'm gonna base our white balance off of our windowsill back here because I know that it's supposed to be white and it looks like things are shifted fairly warm with our red value sitting at about 177 and our blue sitting at 152. So just gonna go in, cool this down a little bit. Yeah, that's getting us much closer. And as we can see on our waveform, I just need to bring down the green a scooch and perfect. And now we have everything lined up and those values are pretty much bang on top of each other. So now we have a balanced image. Now we can add a new node with Alt S and get started on adding our look. Now in the effort of saving time, I've actually created a look beforehand. And we're gonna apply that within our gallery, go over to our stills and then middle mouse click to apply our grade with our balance nodes also here. So I've kept this grade fairly simple just to help illustrate my point. And so I can quickly show what's going on within the look. So to quickly show it, we're gonna go into our highlight and you can see we're grabbing our skin. We're making a couple adjustments in our log and primary controls. And then we're feeding that into a layer node on top of our main look, which is applying this kind of cyan look here. And we've just done that by doing a cross process in our curves and we can just disable our highlight and you can see kind of the before and the after of that node so you can see the look that it's applying. And then on the end here, we are just balancing out our shadows in our log controls. So you can see the adjustment that we've made and I can turn that off and on and you can kind of see a difference in the shadows there. So that's all well and good. But now we have to remember we have a number of other shots within here. So now we want them to also be balanced and have this look applied. So what we could do is we can shift click over here and then middle mouse click. So we've definitely applied the look, but as you can tell, even just by looking at our clip thumbnails down here, the luminance values aren't totally matching up. So this is quite a bit brighter. So maybe we can bring down our offset a little bit and definitely get it in a closer kind of space. But after doing that, we now need to also kind of reset our qualifiers here. So maybe we don't want to get the top of his hair. So now let's say we've balanced all of our shots and we have everything looking good and we send it off to the director and they say, you know what? I really don't like this kind of cross process look that you have going on. Any chance you can make it a nice golden feel? Well, you can definitely do that. We can go in reset this here. Let's just bring our offset over to something super golden. And they're like, you know what? That's the look I want to go with. Sure. Well, now you have to make adjustments to all of your other shots and not so hard when you got four shots in your timeline. Um, when you got like 200, that's going to be a lot of time. So how can we do it better? Well, to start off, I'm going to get us in a pre-prepared timeline here. It's the exact same edit. I've just balanced each of the shots. Now we're ready to get started and to get things started on the right foot. I want to use a color managed workflow. So you can do that in a few different ways. You can use ACES, but for today, we're going to be using the DaVinci YRGB color managed workflow, and I'm going to be working within a DaVinci wide gamut, which automatically identifies what camera I'm using and what kind of log format I'm working with. And then it outputs it to my desired color space that I want to work within. But whenever I'm grading the image, I get to work in a really big color space in the DaVinci wide gamut. We're gonna save that. And now we're already in the Rec. 709 color space. So a ton of time has been saved. Now, because these shots are balanced and they're all part of the same scene, what we can do is we can actually just add them into a group. So I'm just gonna shift click here, right click and add into a new group. And you can name that whatever you want. 
And if you want to learn more about groups, click the little video up here. And now we'll go into our group post clip node graph. And as you probably know, any changes we make within this graph will affect everything else within the group great part of groups. So let's say right off the bat, our director wants us to make it kind of a dark moody look like we had before. Well, we can definitely bring things down quite a bit in darkness, maybe bring down that gamma a little bit, punch it up a little bit, maybe add a little scooch of contrast. Okay, cool. So the director told us that they want kind of that blue look that we had created earlier. Now, the great thing about Resolve is there's a ton of different ways that you can achieve that. But if we're going to keep things simple and fast, the best way I would recommend is within our offset. So to quickly demonstrate why, we're going to go into the edit page and we're going to grab these two compound clips, toss them onto our timeline. Now, all we're looking at is just a generated grayscale and a generated color ramp going from white to red. OK, so now we're going to go into our color page. And as you see on the waveform, you can see going from dark to light. So here's why the offset control is great. When we're making a change to our image, if we want things to be simple and to have an impact over everything kind of the same way, we want it to all move uniformly. Well, if we make that change, let's say in the gamma, we don't really get a uniform change based on the luminance values. As you can see at this darker section, you kind of get these exponential changes that occur. Or let's say if we, I don't know, make an adjustment in the gain. Again, it's having a stronger bias towards the brighter parts of the image, but it's not making as much of a change on the darker parts of the image. And again, this continues on with, let's say, your highlights or your shadows and your log controls. Basically, any of your wheels, you're going to have biases in certain areas, except with offset. As we move it up and down, you get this linear control that literally it's just going to move either that way or that way, whatever way you want it to move. If you want things to get brighter, you can do that. Darker, you can do that too. And it affects the image uniformly. But the fun doesn't stop there. This uniformity is not just limited to luminance changes, but it also does the same thing with color changes. So let's go into our color ramp here. And as you can see, we have our red channel up here and the rest down there. So our green and blue are right on top of each other with our red being brighter. So as we move our red channel up and down, you literally see on the waveform, it is moving up and down. And you can also see this on our vector scope. So if I reset this, you can see it moving up and down. Now, if we go back into our waveform and let's say we try something like that on our gamma with our red channel, you see we're not getting the same effect. It is affecting different areas differently based on their saturation and luminance levels. So we can go back into vector scope and you can see if we reset that, it's making different changes and it's not affecting everything uniformly, which is kind of what we want to deal with when we want to create a simple look that easily applies to everything else that we can make adjustments to. So now that we got the technical stuff out of the way, let me show you what I mean in practice. So now we can start to apply our look in our offsets. Now for me, I like to do that by going into my color tab up here and then selecting printer light hotkeys. So what we can now do is use our number pad on our keyboard to control our offsets. So I can quickly totally change the look just by two button presses. And it's just that easy. You can make the image. Let's say we want to make it way darker. We just press enter on the keyboard. Maybe we want to make it way brighter. We can press plus on the keyboard. So let's say we like this blue look. We can just quickly balance out our shadows going into our shadow controls here. Bring that up just so we get everything on top of each other for the darkest parts of our image, which is these shadows on these pillows here. So that looks pretty good. And we can see it uniformly applied to the rest of our images here because we worked in the group post clip using the offset controls. So we send this off to our director and they're like, you know what? I really don't like this moody look. Let's go with something bright and happy. Well, we can do that super easy. So check this out. I'm going to go into my offset controls and let's make it nice and bright and fun. Well, I'm going to bring up the red, drop the blue. And now we get this nice kind of yellow look and maybe we can... I don't know, go into our midtone detail and just crank that way down, get a nice soft look on everything. And then again, we can just balance out our shadows if that's what we want to do. And maybe we can make everything just a little bit brighter. Boom, it's just that easy. You've now changed the entire look of this whole scene in a matter of seconds. And you can, of course, right click, grab a still, and then save that still for later if you want to apply and maybe change looks 
or maybe you want to switch to something else, then you can do that just in case they change your mind and want to go with what you did in the first place. So I hope these techniques help you with your projects. And before you go, I just have one note I want to end on. The last thing that I'd want taken away from this video is that the simple method is always the best. I'm not saying that. If there's a problem you need to solve, then solve the problem, you know, fix that highlight, change the color of the sky, add whatever power window you need to add. And if you need to track something, go ahead and do it. It's just not a good way to go about building a look for a project because you're going to really paint yourself into a corner. So by all means, go ahead and learn all those fancy techniques and put them in your back pocket in case you do need to solve a problem or make something a little bit better. Just don't be afraid to start a project off simply because just because something's harder doesn't always mean that it's going to produce a better result. Not to mention all the time you're going to save if you need to make changes to the look on the project and make your client really happy. And save yourself a ton of headaches and maybe even get some sleep. Anyway, folks, have yourself a good one. Okay, bye. And if you're wondering why the setup is so different this video when I got this weird microphone set up and curtain behind me, I'm actually in a hotel room and I'm on the road for the next month and a half, but those tutorials are gonna keep on coming. Anyway, bye for real this time.